After years and years of teaching French, I know that my students' biggest struggle is to understand fast spoken French. I know because it's not easy. To understand fast spoken French, there are several things that you need. You need the oral comprehension to catch the words that are actually being said. You need the vocabulary to understand the words, because it's not just knowing what they are, you have to understand what they mean. And at last, having the references, the cultural references to catch the meaning of the words and phrases that you hear. Because sometimes you get the word, okay, but what does it actually mean? What's behind it? Because sometimes even your dictionary is not going to help. If you're stuck at one, meaning you don't understand the word, you get nowhere. If you're stuck at number two, you will just nod and smile because you understand the words, but you don't understand what they mean. And if you're stuck at number three, you will never laugh at jokes or have meaningful conversations in French because you don't have the background and the context. All the popular elements that all French people have and people who speak French who are not French either, because you don't get it and it's very hard to get into con a conversation. I know it's hard and it is completely normal to struggle with that. Let's take an example. En voiture, Simon. It's the thing that comes to my mind. En voiture, Simon. If you don't understand any word, it's just gibberish. It could be any other language. If you understand the words, you understand it's let's get in the car, Simon. What does it actually mean? And you're not called Simon, you're not even a woman. Why are they telling you that? It's a popular saying that says, let's go. And it was popularized by a TV show called Interville. Okay, so it's not directed at, at you if you're not called Simon either. It's just a play on words. It comes from a famous uh, female driver. It's more than now in the cultural context of 21st century. It means like, let's go. So it can be used and now you understand the words, what they mean and the cultural references behind it. En voiture, Simon means let's go. It's impossible to guess. So now, if you want to improve your French oral comprehension, what do you need? You need help first. You need resources to help you improve your oral comprehension and knowledge of French culture at the same time, because you need, as we said, to train your ear, but also to train your brain to understand the words. The second is you need a method to improve slowly and gradually in your comfort zone. So you're not afraid of what you're learning. It's too, it goes too fast for you. The third is you need practice to test yourself and identify your mistakes and quickly fix them. So you don't learn any mistake, which is so difficult to unlearn. And at last, to get that, you need time. As long as you dedicate some time to actually improve your French in your daily or weekly schedule, you're going to improve. You're going to have some time to use the help and the method and to practice your French. But I know that I could tell you all that and time will always be the most difficult thing. This is what I told you on my email on Thursday. If you're registered to get my weekly emails, you will have received this email. If you're not, join. It's free and you have lots of extra content. So, where do you find the time to study French or to study anything? This is exactly what we're going to see today. Today, after watching this lesson, you will be able to make time to study French if you want to. You will also have ideas to improve your French in 10 minutes or less, because sometimes you just have five minutes and you want to make um, the most out of it. So I'm going to give you ideas for that. And at last, what to do to improve your French if you have more time than that. And this is about structure. And I will give you a structure so you can improve your French one step at a time in the long run. As usual, you can download the full written lesson on comeunfrancaise.com. Don't miss out on this. You just have to leave your first name and your email and you will get access to the PDF right away. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, do not miss out on my 10-day everyday French crash course. It's completely free. Lots of people on YouTube miss out on it and it's so sad. Again, you go to kevinfrances.com, leave your first name and email and you will have access to lesson one immediately and it's completely free. Bonjour, c'est Géraldine. Bienvenue sur Commune Française. C'est parti. So the first question is, where do you find the time to improve your French? I don't have the time is usually a very lazy excuse. We all have it, we all use it. 
but you choose to improve what you want if you want to. It's okay not to want to improve your French. I'm absolutely fine with that. Maybe French is not your priority right now. You don't see any use and you're not very interested in it. But if you want to speak French fluently and understand what is being said to you, you can find the time in your schedule if you're up for it. For example, you can stop scrolling on Facebook for up to two hours a day because we use it much more than we think. Uh, stop reviewing your emails 10 times a day if you don't need to. Maybe instead of watching ads on TV, you can hit mute and do some French. Uh, also, think about the programs that you watch, that I watch as well. Am I really interested in it? Do I really care about this? Even watching anything on YouTube, even this lesson now, if you don't care about improving your French, just stop the video and move on and do something else. I'm absolutely fine with that and I always encourage students to focus on what they really care about. So it can be even stopping improving your French and moving on to other things if this is your passion. It should be something that you want to do. And if you want to do it, we all have empty times in the car, in the metro. Um, maybe when you're walking the dog, you want to listen to some French. It's really up to you, but think about this. If you're interested in improving your French, we all can find some time. So let's say that you found something that you can get rid of, which is, for example, watching ads on TV, hit mute and do something else. With 10 minutes or less, here are some ideas for you. First, my favorite resource for a quick learning session, especially for people who don't want to put too much time in grammar and conjugation and just want a very fast result, is Earworms. It's a fantastic resource that I love. It's an app. It's also an audiobook. It has several formats to help you learn French for practical situations in France. It won't teach you any culture, it won't teach you any writing, it will just help you speak if you need to and understand. So Earworms is a fantastic one that you can take in 10 minutes chunks. It's a really good one and uh, give it a try if you want to travel to a francophone country and don't want to learn too much French. Then if you have 5 to 10 minutes, you can use a very famous app. Uh, I don't have any one I really recommend because I don't know them enough and very often they don't have the cultural background, but if you have five to 10 minutes and you just want to practice a little bit, you can use Duolingo, Babbel, or Mosa Lingua as well. It's really up to your taste. I don't have any favorites among those ones, uh, but just for a quick session of French, uh, waiting for a metro or a cab, for example, that's very nice. Then there's something I recommend a little bit more, which is Quizlet, where you can make your own quizzes. I'm telling you that in case you don't know it and you want to do some quizzes on your phone. So you can use the one that they make or other students make, or you can make yours, which is something that we'll see in part three of this lesson. So you can review your, your own vocabulary and test yourself all the time. And if you test yourself on something that you already learned, it's even better for you. So I recommend you make yours, but you can just practice a little bit with someone else's. It's Quizlet and you will find the link on the blog post um, on commonfrances.com. And at last, the service that lots of my students use and they told me lots of good things about, it's italki. Uh, it's a service that puts you in touch with a French teacher or a French uh, speaker, and you can have a chat. So for example, if you have a 30 minute break, well, I should give you 10 minutes examples. If you have 10 minutes in the park, you could program uh, a chat with a French a speaker or a French teacher and just use your French to have a chat, just like if you were calling a friend. So this is a way for you to just have a 10 minutes chat. You will very probably be exhausted by the end. So 10 minutes is enough. And uh, you will practice with a native, which helps a lot. So check out italki, you can take full lessons or think about it just 10 minutes is way enough for you to practice your French on a daily or weekly basis. Something much more simpler now that we don't think about is you can also review your vocabulary sheet that you printed, for example. On commonfrances.com, you can download our written lessons so you can highlight, take notes, but also on Common Frances on my paying programs, you have vocabulary lists and you can print them again and it fits the lesson that you saw. And we're going to see more on that on part three. But again, think about it. It doesn't have to be big. It can be 10 words 
and you can practice them over and over again. It doesn't have to be through an app. It doesn't even have to be through Quizlet, for example. It can be just paper and pen or maybe a notebook. That's a fantastic way to uh, go through your vocabulary. Also, if you have five to 10 minutes, I recommend you listen to a lesson you already studied. So it can be a common Francaise lesson that you already saw, a paying lesson from one of our premium programs, but it can also be a free one that you can find on YouTube or on the blog. Or even on our paying programs, you also have the options to download all our lessons as an audio in MP3 so you can put them on your phone. So this is a good way for you to practice your comprehension. So you see you have lots of options for five to 10 minutes chunks. You're not going to study anything new. I don't recommend you do, but it's a fantastic way for you to review what you already learned. So think about it. Instead of scrolling on Facebook, watching kitten videos, which sometimes are absolutely fantastic, if you want to improve your French, you can make the most out of this time to review your French and improve your listening skills and vocabulary and grammar and everything you like. Now, let's say that you have more than 10 minutes. Uh, it can be 30 minutes, it can be an hour. I'm not going to focus on more than that because it's way too much study. But let's say 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes. The first thing is for you to create a ritual. Something that I really like personally when I'm studying something is to have um, something special that is related to what I'm going to study. So for example, if you want to study French, you can have a special coffee cup with an Eiffel Tower that you would only use to study French. You can also buy a special kind of tea that you would only drink when you're studying your French. For example, I'm not doing any ads for their brands, but I like them. You can have the Thé du Louvre from Palais des Thés, for example, which is super French. You can have something from Mariage Frère. I saw that they just did a very cute series called Day Bastille Day. So you see it's French, it puts you in the mood for it and you have this ritual of having this coffee cup or maybe having a tea or having your favorite seat or something where you're going to study French and you're in this French um, atmosphere and it's pretty fun. So the first thing is try to create a ritual. The second thing is to plan if you can. Five to ten minutes is easy to find uh, without thinking too much. But if you want a bit more, it would be better if you could plan it in your calendar. Don't wait for the right time to happen because it never does. And if you really want to study, studying once a week, twice a week, three times a week, it's up to you. But planning it is important and will make a big change on your schedule and your improvements. The third thing is, um, as a teacher for years and years and years, I see students going too fast too soon. So if you want to keep studying in the long run, focus on one week, one lesson. It can be less, it doesn't have to be one week, one lesson. It can be even a month or lesson if you're really busy. But the idea is to slow down. So it can be a point of grammar, it can be one verb, it can be one conjugation. And if you keep studying, you will make wonders without even feeling overwhelmed by everything, which is what I don't want you to go through. For example, uh, you can take then our program French for Beginners in uh, less than three months if you actually do one week, one lesson. It sounds long, but actually if you learn everything from French for Beginners in less than three months, you will already speak French pretty well. And that will be fantastic. Think about it. The second thing is, for example, one of our bigger courses, such as exercise your French. It could take you more than three months, but less than five. It can be around three, four, depending on how fast you want to study. But again, think about it. Project yourself in before next year, if you already learned everything from exercise your French. Wow, you will know so much. That will be great. So think about it this way. Project yourself. Think backwards. If I have learned everything in this course, it will be great. So if you study a little bit, you will make wonders and you won't be overwhelmed. And also don't forget that all our premium programs come with lifetime access. So you can review it next year in three years, anytime you want and as many times as you wish. So you're in no hurry. As a student, your rule of thumb should be it's more important to review and test yourself in order to remember what you learned than to consume content. If you're watching a a movie in French, that's a fantastic way to just enjoy the French culture. 
But if you want to study it, it's a completely different thing and you should not mix them, thinking that you're studying when you're just en actually enjoying something in French. It's absolutely fine to do one or the others, but don't think that you're learning from just listening to a podcast. It doesn't work this way. What I'm going to tell you about the structure, you can apply to a lesson on CommonFrances.com, one of the free ones. You can also apply it to the paying programs. It's really up to you. And thing is, on our paying programs, I give you a structure, I give you um, tests, so you don't have to make them yourself. But again, it's really up to you. You can use any resource you like and apply the schedule I'm going to give you. So as I said, the fourth point is to structure your learning. This applies to anything. You can learn math with it, you can learn Japanese, you can learn cooking, anything you like. But I'm giving you this schedule to give you an idea and think about the way you're learning. This can be done in 15 minutes or less every day. For example, here's a schedule sample for a week. On the first day, discover. Just watch the lesson once. It can be, again, a Commune Française episode, anything else, something on earworms, something, a podcast. It can be another lesson on YouTube. It's up to you. So watch it. Just enjoy. Try to understand what's going on. On the second day, take notes. Again, so first day, just focus on what's being said to you. Day two, take notes. You can watch again and take notes on your notepad, on your computer, anything you like. On Common Francais, remember that you can download the PDF of the lesson so you can take notes and highlight it. I made uh, half of the job for you. And also ask questions if you have the opportunity in the comment area, for example. I don't understand this point of grammar. Could you tell me more about this word? Okay, take notes, ask questions, think about it. On day three, test yourself. So you can use Quizlet as we talked about before. Or you can use uh, one of our quizzes in our programs, or you can ask a friend to quiz you on that. You can do these lessons together and test yourselves. It's a very fun way to, to learn more and more. Think about it if you study. It's more important to remember what you learned than to discover new things. On the fourth day, practice. I'm teaching you a language, so use it. Make sentences with what you learn in the lesson. You can also use the comment area to submit a few phrases as well. Uh, talk to your dog using the sentences, talk to your neighbor using them, talk to your friend if you can, or a fellow classmate, or even just talk to yourself in the mirror. The idea is to use it so you activate your brain, you activate your mouth, and you use what you learned. On day five, just review what you learned, that's all. Go through your notes again, you can take the tests again and see if you improved. Share your findings with a friend. The idea is to reactivate your brain to see if you remember what you learned. And day six and seven are the same. Just reuse what you learn. No need to go and try to find new things. Unless it's vocabulary that you found in a book and you want to find new definitions because you expand your knowledge. But the idea is again to put it in your brain so you can use it later. In terms of how much I should study, how much time I should put, you should always feel like you could study a little bit more. You should be a bit frustrated about how little you're learning because this means that you really learn what you actually went through and it will become easier and easier the more you learn because you, you will be used to finding out about new things. I know it's tempting to try to learn for two hours, one hour, but I want you to be here in the long run. I want you to keep learning French in two years and not being overwhelmed in a month. I want you to enjoy learning French and not just giving up. So I'm more interested if you learn a little bit every day, a little bit every week, rather than just putting all the time and me not ever hearing from you again as a student. Because as a teacher, it's sad because you will give up on what I love teaching. Try using a schedule. It can be yours. You can change a few things. You can test yourself more. It's really up to you. But the idea is really if you can focus on one topic per week, way enough and you will make wonders. Et toi, quel sujet vas-tu étudier pendant une semaine? Quel sujet vas-tu étudier pendant une semaine? Which topic do you want to study for just one week? Again, think about it. It has to be small. For example, je voudrais mémoriser le présent du verbe faire parce qu'il est très utile en français. Je voudrais mémoriser le présent du verbe faire parce qu'il est très utile en français. I want to remember the present of the verb to do because it's very useful in French. 
As you can see, it sounds very small, but if you actually never ever make any mistake again in the present of the verb faire, that would be a fantastic achievement. Let me know in the comments. And also knowing about what you want to learn is very useful for me because I can make lessons on that for you and help you. If you learned something today, please share it with a francophile friend. It's a fantastic way to support my free work on Comme en Française. You can share it on Facebook, on Twitter, by email, by telling your friends about it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can put a thumb up. That would be very nice. You can also subscribe to the channel to avoid missing any lesson in the future. And if you want more spoken French than just these lessons, go to CaminFrances.com to get my 10-day everyday French crash course. It is a completely free mini course to sound French, even to the French. It's delivered by email. And if you leave your first name and email on CaminFrances.com, you will have access to lesson one right now. I wish you une bonne journée, une bonne soirée, maybe une bonne nuit if you're going to bed, and I will see you next Tuesday. Allez! Salut